What's up everyone and welcome to a more general build video based on my thorough testing of Melee 3.0 and seeing where the build meta sort of settled. This video is going to deal with what I feel are the three main builds that came out of Melee 3.0 and when to use them. I've done videos on weapons I thought were truly outstanding and different and while there's a ton of others that are just very good melee weapons, the Cronin Prime and the Fang Prime just to grab two off the top of my head, it's a bit pointless to spam out videos for them all when they all essentially like boil down to the same few builds. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at what is extremely likely to be by far the most used build, and that is the one that focuses around building combo and using powerful acolyte mods. Funny thing about this is that honestly, pure status weapons are really terrible right now. So realistically, no matter what the crit, and honestly no matter what the status, this is going to end up being the best build even for those weapons, even if they aren't traditionally what we would have called crit weapons. So, here's the build. First mod is going to cause some debate, so let's talk about it here. Condition Overload. Now, there are some saying that Prime Pressure Point is a better choice than Condition Overload. Unfortunately, there's been so much taken out of context, so let's quickly address that. In a straight comparison, Prime Pressure Point is 165% more damage. Condition Overload is 120% per status proc inflicted on the target. So at 0 procs and 1 proc, Prime Pressure Point is better. However, at 2 procs onwards, Condition Overload takes over. So as a straight up comparison, if you compare the two mods, it's easy to see how Prime Pressure Point looks attractive. And admittedly, there is a window where Prime Pressure Point is better than Condition Overload. It's that window where Prime Pressure Point is still one-shotting enemies. However, when a weapon with Prime Pressure Point stops one-shotting, CO takes over and actually kind of runs, runs away with it, really. And the thing is that, honestly, when armor is involved, that's not a particularly large window. The thing is that at higher level, when you're not one-shotting, literally every stance has one or more forced procs spread between its combos. Many of these actually have two or three, meaning that there's always one or more procs added into your condition overload stack. And then you've got to take into account multi-hitting strikes in the combo, the impact that Weeping Wounds is having, especially since any weapon that is at 19% status or above can hit 100% status and you start getting a very different outcome, especially when you start scaling into high level content. So there's a couple of times where Prime Pressure Point does come out very easily ahead, mostly on status immune enemies like the Liches or the Wolf, and in that window where you're still one-shotting enemies basically. If you're looking to go into harder content, CO quite frankly runs away with it. In the case of running both, the problem is that since they're both additive damage mods, you're actually far better off dra like dropping one of them for a multiplicative mod like Gladiator Might, or the ability to hit more targets with range mods, attack speed to hit everything faster, or a support mod like Healing Return. Having both of these mods on ends up being a bit of a mo uh, like a waste of a mod slot. Changing it for an elemental, like in the example that I've seen quoted a lot, Yes, that is not the way to go. However, there are plenty of better mods that make switching from running both CO and Prime Pressure Point to one of the above and makes it way stronger. From then on though, with this build, it's a fairly standard crit build. We've got Blood Rush for crit chance as our combo goes up, Orc and Shatter for crit damage, Berserker for attack speed on crit, full elemental damage with Prime Fever Strike and Shocking Touch, because we're going to up our status chance with Weeping Wounds, which is quite frankly an insane mod now. It's important to note here though how both Weeping Wounds and Blood Rush work, and they only work on your base crit or base status chance and not your modded one. So adding a dual stat elemental and status chance mod loses you a ton of elemental damage and doesn't really improve the weapon a whole lot. You're better doubling down on elemental damage and then using Weeping Wounds. The same kind of goes for crit as well. If you're a combo build like this, going Blood Rush as well as a base crit mod is a bit of a waste. Um, even with how strong Sacrificial Steel is now, Blood Rush comes out on top 
every single time. The final mod is a bit kind of weapon dependent and is one that you can slightly customize. Prime Reach is pretty much a fantastic option here. I feel people are kind of sleeping on how good the change to the range mods is to the shorter range weapons. Because people, are, you know, are still upset because the longer range ones aren't quite out, you know, as out of touch as they used to be. But landing more hits on more enemies and more reliably is fantastic and almost always a great option. Then you could do Gladiator Might for more crit damage, plus the Gladiator crit chance buff. You've got Quickening or Prime Fury if you feel your weapon's not fast enough. What you use is down to you though. Quickening is 15% slower than Prime Fury, however you build your combo faster due to the bonus stat that Quickening has. The issue with this is that once you're fully stacked, the bonus from Quickening does absolutely nothing, so you're losing 15% attack speed for it. It's kind of what you want to do at this stage and which you prefer. This is also where you can put your healing return if you want to take advantage of your status chance and have some sustained healing or combo duration mods if you want to make use of any other focus schools than Naramon. Which actually does lead us on to our focus school which is Naramon. Using power spike to keep our combo up is perfect. The way the new combo system works plays into power spike so well. It's actually a huge buff to it and makes keeping your combo up just ridiculously easy. And that's pretty much the average build for most weapons now. I think that honestly, probably like 85% or more of my weapons will be running this build. Or at least a slight variation of this build. It is definitely the strongest like, combo build available right now. One slight variation of that build that does deserve mentioning though is a version of this that doesn't run Weeping Wounds. It's really only for like four corrosive projection squads or if you have reliable armor strip from a frame for example. Drop Weeping Wounds for Molten Impact and Shocking Touch for North Wind. That's going to give us Viral and Heat which is pretty much the best elemental combo against everything non-armored. This does require either a coordinated squad or a frame with a 100% armor strip but I definitely thought it was worth a quick mention. So the second build, the pure heavy attack build. This is actually a very simple one to explain when to use. It's literally only when your heavy attack has a guaranteed slash proc. Some of these heavy attacks are a lot better than others, namely ones like the Size and the Nakanas, both which have this sort of forced flash proc on their heavies. But I guess just about any weapon can be modded for a heavy attack if you want to. For this build we have a few core mods on the weapon and that are not going to change no matter the weapon. Prime pressure point for our base damage, no need for CO here since we're only going for that single huge hit. Sacrificial steel for our crit chance, 440% crit chance on a heavy attack is absolutely huge and will push most decent weapons into orange crits at least with ease. Amalgam organ shatters on here for our crit damage. You do lose 5% crit damage compared to the standard version, but it will make your heavy attack wind up 60% faster, and that makes the weapon feel so much nicer to use. Alongside Berserker, which is also going to increase your attack speed, that combo can make heavy spamming feel really nice to do. Corrupt Charge is going to give us a permanent 2 times damage multiplier on our heavy attacks. Like I say, quite literally doubles our damage. And then we have Prime Rage as our 6th core mod, which is going to allow us to hit multiple targets super easily, as well as allow us to hit enemies that are backing up, which is something that fairly often happens to weapons with lower range. But that's only 6 of our mod slots covered, the rest are kind of up to you really. There's a few things to do here. Honestly, a Riven here is 100% the best option. They, they elevate pure heavy attack builds like this to the next level and really allow you to push them to crazy levels. The best stats on here would be initial combo, crit damage, crit chance, and then damage to Grenier, since Grenier are basically our end game faction right now. And that's actually pretty much the order of importance on them too. But if you don't have a Riven, you have two mod slots to fill here. You can also add Life Strike here. It's a full heal, even to an Inaros on every single attack. It's some really damn nice sustained tank with that. You could go with Killing Blow, especially if your weapon is one that forces a slash proc, since that scales from base damage. It's like Prime Pressure Point, Killing Blow is an additive damage mod. 
This means that it's actually kind of expendable, much in the same way as you tend not to stack Prime Pressure Point and Condition Overload. However, it's actually a must-have for the Slash-based ones because of the way that the Slash proc scales off a of base damage. Gladiator though, Gladiator might works on here for more crit, more crit damage. Um, another option is Dispatch Overdrive where you get movement speed on a heavy attack hit. So you can keep very mobile while doing your heavy attacks. And Prime Fever Strikes, also an option for those weapons without the guaranteed slash proc. Going with that, at least, you know, a little bit of elemental, it's good to try and push your heavy attack damage higher. The pure heavy attack build is one that can be insanely powerful, and the modding of it with two mod slots you can tailor to what you're doing as well as your playstyle can make things really, really interesting. It's not a build that I feel many weapons can really pull off, especially at the high levels. That really only falls to the ones with guaranteed slash procs or other ridiculous powerhouse weapons that are the gun blades. However, this is pretty much the standard heavy attack build if you want to go down a specific heavy attack route. The third build is a hybrid of the two builds, combining elements of the combo build and the heavy attack build. Weapons like the Archetitron or the Sancti Magistar have mechanics that can make use of a hybrid build like this. But this is kind of the build for those of you that want to combine both normal and heavy attacks into one build as well. However, I will warn you, this is awkward as hell for mod. Since we already went through a lot of the mods, um, Condition Overload, Berserker, Blood Rush, Amalgam Organ Shatter, Prime Fever Strike, and Weeping Wounds are going to carry over from the normal combo build. But as you can see, we only have one elemental right now. That's because in place of Shocking Touch, we're going to use Focus Energy. That gives us corrosive damage as well as 40 combo efficiency, so we lose less combo from our heavy attacks. So it looks simple so far, right? Well, this is where the fun begins. We only have 40% combo efficiency. We need to be hitting 90%. That is the cap for combo efficiency right now. There's two ways of being able to do this. Either we put a reflex coil on here, as you can see on the screen. That gives us that 90% cap and frees up our focus school to be Naramon to help us keep our combo up. Since we have no room for a combo timer mod, or, if you want to do something else, like for example the heal on the Sancti Magistar scales with range, but if you want range, you need to drop Reflex Coil. This then means we need to use Inner Might Passive on Zanurik to hit the efficiency cap, but this leaves us mid no combo timer. Now that would come from the Swift Momentum or a mod you can put on your Warframe, <laughs> meaning we're spilling over so far from the weapon we're needing to mod our Warframe for it too. But that's kind of what you need to do for this. Admittedly, this is where a ribbon for the weapon would come in. You could fairly easily cap heavy attack efficiency on its own on a ribbon, and that only takes one slot and allows us to go back to the 90% elemental instead of focus energy, and freeze up our focus school to go back to Naramon. But as you can see, going for this hybrid build is so much of a pain in the backside, that honestly I feel it's not worth the effort on most weapons. However, if you're wanting to use the weapon to its, I guess, quote unquote fullest, then this build is definitely an option and allows you to use both the combo normal attack and the heavies without impacting your combo counter too much. It does work amazingly well on the Architriton and pretty well on the Sancti Magister, so it might actually be worth taking a look at. So that's kind of my general look at the three main builds we've really come out of, like, Melee 3.0. The reality of Melee 3.0 is that we were always going to settle on some main builds, and these are the ones that have come to be for now. Maybe the rage mode that comes in the future will change things up once again. I thought I'd rather do this video rather than another 15 Melee build videos on weapons with the same build. Some, there are some properly good weapons out there that are extremely strong, but are all the same build. There's a polearm build that does actually outperform the Orthos that, I mean, honestly, I might do a video on that on its own. We've got the Cronin Prime, you've got the Fang Prime, Silver and Aegis Prime, the Karna Prime, Reaper Prime, Fragor Prime, Tipido Prime, Gram Prime, lots of Primes, Venka Prime, or the Zor Machete. 
they're all fantastic weapons, but there's, like, let's be honest, they all use one of the builds above, mostly all the first combo build. And that's why I wanted to get this video out, to give you an idea of how to go about building all your melee weapons post melee 3.0. However, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. I look forward to reading and replying to your comments. I'll try and be active in there once again like I have been recently. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up, sub and hit the bell for more Warframe content. Rebuild Banshee is coming on Monday, so I hope to see you all there.